Hello and welcome to The More You Know Co., a podcast about the people and ideas of Northern Colorado. I'm your host, Ivan Wayne. Let's see who we got today. This time on the show, we're going to hear from Bianca Fisher, the Associate Director of the Downtown Development Authority located right here, smack dab, in downtown Greeley. Please excuse the plethora of background noises. The DDA office is very busy. It's kind of an open concept where there are no roofs to, or no ceilings to anyone's offices. So hopefully the background noise isn't too much, but uh, I enjoyed my conversation with Bianca. I got to ask some interesting questions and enjoy. Here I sit with Bianca Fisher, the Associate Director of the Downtown Development Authority for Greeley. Yep. Did I get that right? You got it. Oh, you man. nailed it. Sometimes I stumble. Out that, of was, the game. that was good. It was really <laughs> <Okay>. good. <laughs> so let's start with a question I think a lot of our listeners might have, and that is, what is the Greeley Downtown Development Authority? That's a great question. So a DDA um, is what we call it for short, not to be confused with a DA or a DEA, which we sometimes get, which is funny. Um, but a DDA is a voter-approved um Really, it's an area. It's a we're a quasi municipal, um, almost special district um, that was formed by a vote of the people and the businesses that actually are um, within our boundaries. So, a DDA exists for the economic development, the health, and vitality of downtown. So, the theory behind that was to create an area. Um, and actually, um, there is a property tax that comes back um, to the DDA for our operations to be able to support um, various initiatives with the hope of making downtown a fun, vibrant place to be. Very nice. And when was the DDA um, put into place? So officially, it was formed in 1998. Um but certainly downtown redevelopment efforts were long before that. Um, certainly a name that is known well in the community is Bob Toynton. And, and for decades, even prior to that, there was um, him and various other community members that really rallied around the idea of making downtown um, vibrant again. I mean, if you think about historically, downtowns have always been the heart of a city, of a community. Um, now, obviously, through various economic periods and times, um, there was times of vacancy and decreased um, economic activity. And so there was a group of invested individuals who decided that they were going to um, really rally around making downtown um, a great place to be again. Um, and so really in 1998, that was the formation of the Downtown Development Authority and then from there and through various mechanisms um, like creating um, a mill levy and then also um, we're funded through a TIF, which stands for Tax Increment Financing. So when a property increases in value, we get a portion of the increment um, of that value that comes back again for redevelopment into the district. So, so it seems a bit exponential. The better Greeley does, the better property is selling for the better you all do, which in turn allows you to put more effort back in downtown. Absolutely. So that's the theory, really. It's, it's not meant to be um, an economic dr- drain. It's not just, you know, hey, we're collecting taxes and expending them for fun. It's really meant to utilize that as a tool to reinvest back in for exactly what you said. It's supposed to be perpetual. It's supposed to feed itself and continue to grow. And really... Um, in theory, you could almost work yourself out of a job, right? I mean, not there's always work to be done, but but for example, Fort Collins has a DDA. There's a DDA in Longmont. Windsor created a DDA, um, and so it, it's really just an economic development tool. So um, some of the projects, um, really, you know, they're varied in nature. I mean, we do everything from planting flowers, so it adds to the aesthetics. Um, Things like bike racks, um, public art, so murals, sculptures, um, the aesthetics. So the way that people feel when they're downtown is is really important. Um, All the way to bigger developments um, of housing and hospitality, um, different opportunities there. So the work is, it could be minuscule all the way up to, you know, multi-million dollar um, development projects. So, but again, you're right. It's it's that cycle of, it should be something that um, 
it's almost a regentrification, and that's the theory, you know. And especially, and we've seen that with some of the projects that we do, is when in, when a property is improved, when its value is improved, it almost spurs um, the neighbors in the area to be gentrified also. Right. So do you all play an active role in trying to entice businesses to either move or start here in downtown? Sure. So I would say historically when we had a lot of vacancies, that was a, an, a strong objective of ours. Who can we target? Who can we reach out to? Maybe people want a second location. Um, how do we entice businesses um, to set up shop in downtown? What I will say within the last few years um, is we actually have a very low vacancy rate um, for business, which is a positive and it's a negative because we just don't have a lot of properties available. Um, so honestly, we don't actually target businesses. We get inquiries of folks that come to us and say, you know, I want to open a hair salon, for example. Do you have? Do you know of properties in your district that are available for lease or, or to purchase? Um, so again, it, it's positive um, in that we don't have a, a big vacancy rate. Um, but again, I think too, to be strategic, we really have to look at business type to see does it align with our mission and our vision to make it a vibrant, fun place um, for people to be. So is the business type congruent with what we're doing in the location that it's at? So I think we have opportunity there and room to grow as far as, you know, maybe um, it's a great retail location and it's a, an attorney's office, you know, that's utilizing that great retail space. So maybe there's an opportunity for them to move to the second level or into an office space and then actually lease out that ground level space to a potential business. So there's certainly um, opportunities there um, for businesses. But really, it's been fun to see um, some of our businesses have started out in very small locations, expanded into bigger ones, and then even purchased properties in the district. So that's been a really positive thing um, to see. I've been with the DDA um, about nine and a half years. And our businesses, I mean, it, it used to be a revolving door. Um, they'd come, they'd go, we'd get... It, it's. Small business ownership is a huge challenge, um, and I think it's a big mark of success for the downtown that our small businesses are really doing well. They're expanding. They're growing. Um, and we have a great support network, too, of small businesses. We have a group called the Greeley Downtown Alliance, mm -hmm. and they actually support each other. Once a month, they get together. They share what's happening at their businesses. They do joint marketing. They put on a holiday open house um, after Thanksgiving. So, again, it's kind of that feel... Um, of being local and small scale as opposed to being out, you know, at a shopping center with kind of more big box retailers. Right. And I will say that since I moved here four years ago, uh, July of 2014, at least aesthetically, downtown Greeley has changed so much. I mean, um, where do I start? Do you, have you all had a hand in the amount of murals that have gone up in the last... I don't know, four or five years? Sure, absolutely. So um, public art is definitely something we prioritize. Um, we have a group of people that get together. We call it our public realm committee, and that's exactly what they look at. Um, how can we support the city sculpture on loan program? How can we partner to get together with the cities? Um, they have a, an art and public places program where they um, put funds toward murals. So we've done joint mural projects with the city to really maximize those funds so that we can get really unique special pieces in downtown. Um, we recently just completed um, our art alley project. So that was a three slash four year endeavor um, that we partnered with the city arts commission on. And we worked with local artist Armando Silva and we had a variety of artists install pieces, whether they were painted pieces or more sculpture wood pieces um, throughout the alley that sits between 8th and 9th Street in our core downtown. So there's been really fun um, art projects that we've got to work on um, alongside the city. And I know they've, they've endeavored to even look at electrical boxes and, and even water sewer um, projects. And so it's really fun for us when we can partner. Again, always resources are never as plentiful as you would like. And so when we get those opportunities, we love um, to work together and collaborate with them. Um, and then lighting. And another thing I think people tend to notice about downtown, especially right in our core, is we have year-round 
Um, our, all of our trees are lit, and in our alley we have festoon string lighting. Um, and it's certainly a, it's a big maintenance item, but something that we really feel like adds to the aesthetic, to the safety, to just people's enjoyment of downtown. It really creates an environment that's warm, um, that's fun, that's a little bit magical even. Um, so definitely those, those aesthetic things. The other piece of that is we offer a facade grant program. So to businesses, we, we want to help support them make improvements to the exterior of their building. So we will actually give them a grant to help make improvements like paint and awnings and um, signage sometimes, um, different um, architectural structures of their building um, to really make an improvement from a visual aesthetic um, standpoint. And we've had a lot of facade grants that we've completed, um, which I do think make a big impact in our downtown district. So is this like a, a foregone agreement where they will put the, the touches on the outside and then they get reimbursed from you all? Or it's like a conversation, hey, we'd like, you know, this look or, or we'd like, how does that work? Sure. So it could go either way. Sometimes people have a very clear picture of what they want to do and they'll come to us. So we have two tiers of the program. If they're just going to be doing work on their exterior, we will give them a matching 50-50 grant. So mm. say the project is $15,000, we will give them $7,500, and that is reimbursed after the fact once they complete the work. Um, and the max on that grant is $7,500. The second tier of that program is for businesses that are maybe doing a larger redevelopment project. So they're maybe renovating the whole interior of their building and doing a facade program. Um, under that program, we can actually award up to 10% of the total project cost um, at no more than 100% of their facade. So that incentivizes a little bit more for the folks who are making a bigger investment into renovating their building. A great example, actually, of this, the last one we just did was Luna's Tacos and Tequila, um, which is right next door to our office, and a great example um, of just being able to support a business um, two actually young couples who are who just opened the business um, to be able to support their endeavor. So... Yeah, that that place is brand new. It's right next door. Yeah, How have it's you been? Great. It's wonderful. It's it's fun. There was actually just an article in the newspaper about um, the interior design is just phenomenal. I mm -hmm. mean, it is bar none the coolest environment in Greeley, um, and just kind of a unique connection to a set designer, you know, for MTV shows, which is wild. But um, it's wonderful, and the food is great, and the owners are phenomenal, and it's just that. Just, yeah, it's unbeatable um, in its just environment, so. Yeah, the back, so the top level, there's a back patio space, mm -hmm. and then there's a huge mural on the building next to it. It's like the first time I went to that space, it was awesome. I, yeah. It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's really great, and, and we're seeing more of those. Another great one, um, Tower, Fi Tower 56 mm -hmm. Distillery yeah. just opened up um, in the back of the Rio, um, and that's another great um Gosh, a really well done space and a great product, great owners. It's really fun for us, too, to see that entrepreneurship take take hold in downtown. And I think that's really fun to get to support local um, entrepreneurs and artists. Um, um, downtown Greeley, we are actually a part of um, a greater district known as the Greeley Creative District. And we're actually recognized by the state of Colorado as... Um, an official creative district. Um, so really it encompasses our downtown and it com and encompasses um, the university district um, as well. So really what that is, is it's recognizing just all of the art and not just art in the traditional sense, but one thing I always love to tell people is we have so many makers in downtown Greeley and Greeley as a whole, really. Um, people who have unique art forms, like for example, we have a business in downtown Greeley called Distortions Unlimited and they make these monsters. I mean, they literally make monsters that have been used on movie sets and um, different, you know, creatures that are terrifying and really creative and really fun. Um, and then we have metal work, what metal workers and woodworkers. Um, Magnolia River is a great example in our district, and um, they've done a lot of uh, metal work. But they also fabricate wood, you know, produce bins for Whole Foods and wine racks. And um, so there's this just this really neat. Um, resurgence too of I think looking at the the makers the, the crafters and really the artists that are outside of just 
um, you know, what you would typically think of as an artist. Um, but certainly we have plenty of, of incredible muralists and painters and sculptors. And um, so that, that's a neat way to, to honor and recognize that um, as well. Yeah, a lot of them seem to pop up overnight. I like to ride my bike around downtown, especially when the weather's nice in the summer. And it just seems like I'm always stumbling upon a brand new mural. And I think, wait, is this really brand new or did I see this before? Yeah. Yeah. And that mural alley with the string lights that you mentioned, um, that is a place that when people visit uh, and come stay with me or we got friends from out of town that come in, we take them to that alley because that's just such a... A neat place. It's yeah, cool. a neat story about that too is I think our alley, um, you know, kind of back when it was, you know, a place you didn't really, our, our alley is unique in that it also serves a, as a walk through between the 8th and 9th Street Plaza. So you can actually traverse it kind of perpendicular and, and serves functionally that way. Um, but it seemed like it wasn't being very well used and, and it, it was unclean. It, it didn't feel safe. Um, and so this was, you know, a really fun initiative, too, where you can really realize the impact of art and lighting um, to make a fun place. And I, I tell people the story is we can't tell you how many um, senior portraits we see, like family pictures, people going into the alley, which you think, I mean, it's still a functional alley. There are still dumpsters. There's still <laughs> grease bins there. Sometimes yeah. there smells, you know, it's still functional for our businesses. But at the same time, it's become this fun place of beauty. And actually, I saw a bride in there in a, I mean, a perfectly white gown in the alley getting her pictures taken with her, you know? So it's, again, it's really fun to see those, those changes and just the power of art, um, in downtown. And, and feet from the bride is the dumpster from bears. Yes, right exactly. Do you happen to know who lives up on that? There, so for the listeners, there's this patio above the, the, um, this walkway that we're talking about and every time i walk underneath it all these murals the string lights this alley super close like literally feet from half of downtown and i'm always thinking who was the lucky person to snag that it's really strategic actually so um he his name is ryan gentry and he actually owns several of the college bars um, downtown um and actually his office is right next door to us um, and I think for him, he did, he hasn't owned it but several years. Um, but again, he saw it as a great opportunity. Hey, he could live here and he owns business here, which is great. And I will use that kind of as a segue into something that has been a big um, of importance to us is the residential. So I think that is hard. Like you'll see these fun little lofts, but they're never available, right? I mean, it's it's like this this hidden gem, and yet we don't have many availabilities for um, folks who want to live downtown. And we get the request. We had someone just call this morning um, who was like, I'd love to live downtown. Where do I find a place or how can I buy a place? And it's really tight. And obviously housing as a whole in general in the state of Colorado and in the city of Greeley is tight. Um, But I will say in downtown, it's something that we've recognized for a number of years as a need to have more residents, more opportunities, um, more supply, honestly, is what it comes down to for for folks. And that's why we're really excited about um, one of the bigger developments that's coming down the pike um, that they are starting to demolish buildings and should be breaking ground here soon is along 8th Avenue, um, closer to 17th Street. So I will say that our district is fairly large we have 55 blocks so we extend to the south to about 17th street okay and to the north to about 5th street so you kind of think almost weldworks and then like chipotle kind of as our end of district anchors um but we're not this you know nice rectangle shape we're kind of this odd shaped district but all that to say is this development is going to occur on the southernmost part of the district. Um, so it will be closer to UNC campus, but really their focus um, is on market rate housing that's maybe geared toward graduate students, toward UNC professors. Um, there's going to be about 220 units will be first in, in three different buildings, um, really at kind of 16th and 17th streets on 8th Avenue. Um, and again, if you drive down there and you're wondering, hey, what, what is all this rubble or what are these bulldozers knocking down these buildings? Um, that's what's happening. So we're going to be 
we'll have 220 new residents um, in the district, which is huge. And this um, particular developer has purchased multiple properties along 8th Avenue and has really taken hold of that and is branding it as the Maddie Corridor. And that's mm. short for Madison Avenue, which is what it was historically known as. Really? Um, yeah, so it's really, it's fun to see. Something that I'm really proud of um, about Greeley is, the local investment of our community. I mean, this is a community that for some, this is where they were born and raised. Um, and for others, this is, it's new and it's home. But um, like example, for the Doubletree Hotel that was built, that was a group of 13 local investors that pulled together funds. They pulled together and said, we're going to make this happen because we want this in our community. We want to invest in our community. Um, which again, I think is really admirable. Um, and so with that's the family neat. that's purchasing all of those, it's it's exciting to see what they'll do. And I think a lot of it will be residential based um, with some retail on ground level. Um, we definitely want to bring in that component as well, but um, really great opportunities yeah. along 8th Avenue, which historically, again, it's such an entry point into Greeley. 8th Avenue is Highway 85. And I know for me, I had never been to Greeley I moved here. I had done my first year of school out in, in California, and, and I'm driving up 85. I'm going to come to Greeley for school. I've never been here. And it was such a stark reality coming up 8th Avenue because it just wasn't a mo really appealing, attractive corridor. So it serves really as a main arterial into the city, into the university, and into downtown. So we're really thrilled about their plans to develop along there. Yeah, 8th Ave is like the lifeblood between UNC and downtown. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a lot of the UNC students somehow don't know about all the glamour of downtown. And yeah, yeah I wish they did. I, I teach at UNC and I try to get the word out. So I'm sharing That's the great. secrets. Um, you reminded me, I was fascinated with the statues that popped up along 8th Ave when they first came out. Was mm -hmm. that you all as well? The art tree. We call them the art trees. Art so, trees. Um, okay. Yeah. So that was a joint partnership um, with the City Art Commission. And really, they borrowed the idea from San Diego. So in San Diego, along their pier, um, they started a program um and they called theirs art trees as well. And so what they did was they take kind of a planter base and commission artists to have their own spin and interpretation of an artistic tree. Um, and so we, um, we joined the art commission in that project um, to start installing them. And that was the hope of, of saying, you know, this is a corridor that's not the most attractive and beautiful. Again, how can we use art and things that are within our power and domain um, to bring beauty and, and, you know, make it feel warm and inviting. Um, so, yeah, that's a really fun project, and I'm glad you mentioned that. So we also even work with Happy Life Gardens, and they plant flowers in there um, in the base of those art trees. Oh, and, nice. Um, so those are ones that are owned by the city because we do have some art in downtown that is a part of the rotating Sculpture on Loan program. So those pieces get changed out, and they come and go each year. Um, but those are permanent pieces that are owned by the city. There's a certain art tree there that uh, my friend and I argued about extensively. I said, it definitely is a Dr. Seuss tree. And he said, it's not. It uh, is. It, it, it is, is the truffle a tree. Yeah, it's got the pink top and the, the yeah. yeah. Do you happen to know what any of the other trees are based off of? Any of the artists that drew you know, from literature? or? You know, that there's some interesting really, um, it's kind of across the board. We, there are a couple local sculptures. Um, I know one um, Colette Pitcher who owns Showcase Art Center actually on 8th Avenue is her art studio and she's really known to work in bronze and so she just, you know, she took a more literal kind of tree approach with a little cat in bronze. Um, but there's really, it's, it is interesting to look at them each individually and, and I wish I had the opportunity to you know, hear more of the artists kind of take and what inspired, um, you know, their interpretation of their trees. It really was a far reaching. Um, we had artists from all over um, the United States actually um, put their pieces together for those. But um, yeah, so it, it's it's all over. There's some really unique. There is a tree that that actually has people's faces on them, and it's actually really neat because the artist actually went into downtown Greeley and asked people if he could take their picture and use it on his art tree. So these weren't just like random stock photos, or you know maybe from his community wherever he was from, but these were like faces of downtown Greeley, um, which I thought was a really neat um, way to highlight, um, yeah, our community. But
But I will say, um, kind of going to your point of, you know, wishing people knew about downtown. I know for me, when I was in college at UNC, I had no idea there was a downtown. Um, and one day I literally just happened to be walking and I stumbled upon downtown um, and was so surprised by just the quaintness and, and the, the shops that were there. And it's changed vastly since mm-hmm. then. I mean, that was... 12 years ago, um, and it's changed so much since then. So it is such an interesting, um, and that's something that we definitely strive to work with, um, really strengthening our ties with the university. Um, and, and through our partnership, there is actually a committee called the University District. And so we sit on that committee, representatives from the city, and then also from the university to, to look at how can we make, um, you know, Folks from UNC feel welcomed and, and let it feel like an integrated city because you've heard the term of like, oh, Greeley sometimes feels like a city with a college in it, not a college city. Mm-hmm. And I think so much of that is a part of your experience as a college student is to engage in the greater community outside of just being on campus. So, um, yeah, we've looked at ways to, to do that as well. And one great way and a great opportunity for people to kind of get their feet wet into downtown, not just college students, but really anyone is through events. So mm-hmm. that's another big part of, of what we do is we put on events because we recognize their importance to bring people downtown who maybe haven't been in a long time or um, who just weren't aware. So um, we put on Friday Fest, and that's at the beginning um, of the summer all the way through the end of September. So we actually go June, June through the end of September. Um, every Friday night on our plaza, we have live free music. Um, people can bring their drinks out onto the plaza. There's bubbles and chalk for kiddos, face painting, um, a lot of fun for families. So it's a really fun, approachable um, event that has just exploded. I mean, we have thousands of people here every Friday night. Um, And that kind of leads us right into Oktoberfest, which we are in the throes of planning right now. So hence, there's boxes all over our office filled with steins and all sorts of fun things um, getting ready for Oktoberfest. But um, that's, you know, the last full weekend in September. And then we go into the holidays with the Holiday Open House and Trick or Treat Street. And um, we put on a Blarney on the Block event. So we keep ourselves uh, busy with a lot of um, event programming as well. But we really see it as a great tool um, to bring folks to downtown as well. So I like, I love to be downtown. I'm sort of a Greeley advocate. And even I didn't know about Oktoberfest until last year. And the only reason I made it was on the last night, a group of my friends were there and said, hey, you should come join us at Oktoberfest. And I was like, where? And they said, "Down, like Greeley, downtown, Lincoln Park. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I went and I was so impressed. It's, it's yeah. such a fun, was... fun event. I mean, we've put it on, gosh... I don't know, 15, 20 years. And before that, the city put it on. And then actually, originally, originally in the 80s, it started in a UNC professor's backyard. So it kind of (laughs) had this little root. And then it's grown exponentially. And we see about 8,000 plus people over the course of those two days. Um, And a lot of fun, like great entertainment, fun, traditional polka, but also mixed with some contemporary uh, music as well. And then obviously great. We like to feature our craft breweries. Like Mm -hmm. we are in the Napa Valley of... Of beer country. So um, a lot of great beer, great food vendors, um, an extensive children's area where kids can come play games and go down bouncy slides and do all sorts of fun activities. And then actually this year we're really expanding on our adults games because we found that the adults like to play too. So oh, yeah. we of have course. a giant, you know, gladiator joust and a sticky wall and all sorts of fun too for the adults. So um, yeah, it's, it's a great, really fun event too. And Aaron Heaton of Grimm Brothers, uh, previously on the podcast, mentioned that people in Colorado, maybe other places, but especially here, they like to know their brewer. And what I enjoyed was that Oktoberfest in Greeley featured a lot, like if not all, of the breweries here in town. And there were some from surrounding towns, too. And it was just neat to be able to walk up to that stand and be, oh, look, the crab tree. Like, let's go over to that booth. And mm-hmm. it was uh, it's just neat to have everyone there in the community and Especially if you're a beer lover, like what better time of year than October yeah, 1st? Yeah, absolutely. And we've grown. So this year, actually, um, we have a new brewery in downtown Greeley called Green Earth Brewing. They um, 
they won't actually be in our general area, but they will be in our VIP beer area um, just because they're a little bit smaller, so they didn't quite have the volume yet. But I imagine by next year they'll be uh, up and running a little bit uh, heavier volume. But um, also Rocky Mountain Tap House, um, they're um, in West Greeley. They're going to come down and pour at the event. We also have Bricks Tap House and Brewery in downtown, and they're actually going to be joining in the general area as well. So it's fun that we can feature um, more and more of our own breweries and then certainly um, Grimm Brothers, and then we also have um, Loveland Ale Works. Um, this is their actually their first year at our Oktoberfest. And then Prost um, from Fort Collins. Mm, yeah. um, they'll be there, which is a perfectly fitting event for them. Um, so yeah, so we're, yeah, we're excited about it. And actually, that's tip, actually why we rebranded our Oktoberfest as Oktobrewfest. There you um, go. Really uh, highlighting all that great craft beer. So. Yeah, that's awesome. And Friday Fest is something to see, um, even if you don't stay for the whole evening. I will say, this is another thing I didn't know. And uh, when I first moved here, we just happened to come out on a Friday night. I was like, what is going on? And then I saw people drinking outside and was like, okay, there's got to be an event. And then there's live music and I looked it up. I was like, oh, it's this thing called Friday Fest. It's actually the last one uh, mm-hmm. that year. And uh, it's just a it's a neat event and it brings such a vibe to downtown even if you don't you don't stay there for the whole night yeah it's really and it is and it's one of those things where it feels relaxed you can just come out and enjoy it you can grab dinner Mm -hmm. um and and it's fun actually we doug's diner who was downtown and, and traditionally they only would serve breakfast and lunch and now they've decided to stay open for dinner so that people oh. can really even stay and enjoy just on um, friday fest um they've or? actually expanded at this not at their other locations but down here which is really fun because i think they've they've seen that momentum of um what's happening at friday fest and then um now tower 56 is a part of our what we call our go cup area um and then also luna's um a new one to also be able to enjoy a go cup from as well so it's been fun even with the growth of our our businesses our restaurants and our um you know bars and restaurants um to be able to expand it and the crest also and patrick's and so yeah there's a great selection too for folks and then again but it's great for families and kiddos who want to dance and play with bubbles and get their (laughs) face painted so and fire dancers which are always present yeah. So the Go Cup means that they can get drinks at the buildings and, and the bars down here and then take it outside within the Friday Fest zone. Correct. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is really unique. And it is always, I always think it's funny to think Greeley way back when was actually a dry town. So mm-hmm. it, it's, I think it's such a, a great synchronicity and really coming a full circle that Greeley was the first city actually in the state of Colorado to take advantage of that law that allowed for the creation of the common consumption area, which was about six years ago, actually seven years ago, um, when they passed that state bill. Um, so I, I, I think that's ceremonious that we, uh, little dry, dry town Greeley, uh, took advantage of that. And, um, so it's been fun and obviously across the state now there's multiple, um, common consumption areas, but, um, we're really proud of, of what ours has become and, and certainly have seen that and heard that in feedback. So, Okay, yes. Uh, a couple of places I wanted to ask about that I think are in your jurisdiction. So the first, I've seen this building a lot and I've heard about it, but uh, I want to get your take on it. The Courier Inn. Sure, yeah. yeah. So that's a really neat little B&B. So it actually used to be called the Sodbuster. Um, and then... Um, it was purchased by a couple, Derek and Stephanie Bolton, who, if you have not had the chance, they might be a great next podcast uh, Always couple. But suggestions. Um, they're wonderful. They're a British couple, the most delightful. They will talk your ear off for hours, probably. Just delightful. And and they were um, kind of looking, and they met with a realtor and said, "We want to open a and B." And and they're you know their realtor is trying to steer them toward Denver and these other communities, and they just fell in love with Greeley. Ended up purchasing, then was the Sodbuster, um, and turned it into the Courier Inn. And um, it's just the most quaint and beautiful little bed and breakfast. And it's it's such a little hidden special gem. I actually, I had actually used it there. Um, I had a baby shower for my son um, years and years ago. Um, but it's just such a beautiful and unexpected and such a unique architectural building as well. So um, there it's really circular. are. Yeah. 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 Which is kind of like City Hall, too. I'm like, there's some fun, kind of unique uh, architecture in downtown. Yeah. There's always jokes to be made about the Statue of Liberty that's actually in Greeley. Yeah, which has been stolen. So, uh, Sto- yes. Stolen? Yeah, a couple of years ago, someone made Isn't off with it. it. Like, 
But they Cement were not and super heavy, or <laughs> well, they've staked it down now. But uh, the, the people weren't smart enough to take it out of the bed of their truck after they uh, lifted it, so it was quickly recovered. But uh, okay. yeah, there's there's some there's some sure fun stories. They stole but... the miniature Lady Liberty and they literally left it in their truck bed, and mm-hmm. the police were like, "Well, yeah, we're cracking yes. this one." Yeah, it, it was uh, caught red-handed, so you, you can't have too much sympathy there. But... And that's the same statue that's back. And... Yeah, they were, well, they restored. I, I think they were mostly able to restore it. I think they had some minor repairs, and then certainly took uh, extra precautionary measures when they reinstalled it. Um, but another fun, unique kind of odd story, which just happened recently. A lot of people know this specific piece of art he's the little man with the briefcase who mm. who sits near the chase building i mean he's it's like become iconic i mean i don't i i was never around downtown when he wasn't there this little man and he's just but come to find out recently um that he, it's actually owned by dia by the airport and he was just here on loan for several years and i think they must have just forgotten about him and they decided to collect him so literally the airport has retrieved him um, a few weeks ago, and so now he's gone, which makes me a little sad. Um, but what the heck? I know, I was so sad. I mean, he's just—he's truly become iconic. You round the corner, and there's the little man with his briefcase. I mean, people take pictures with him, and sometimes people decorate him. Like in the winter, someone gave him a <laughs> scarf. I mean, he's—it was such a fun little icon. So we'll have to figure out a, a good replacement for him. But um, it was interesting. He was just on loan from the airport, so. I'm sure the conspiracy theorists have something to say about this yes, with all true. the mystery shrouding the DIA. And now they've given Greeley this gift, quote unquote, forgot. I know. It took him back. I know. This is, uh, this is more you know, to the, more if to the story. If there's a listening out there, if there's a listener out there that wants to do some digging, they, they got a new story right yes, there. Yes, right there. Um, so is Weld Works in your district? It is okay. in our district. And you all must feel like you hit a home run because now. This, no one is paying me to say this, but Weldworks is like the mascot of Greeley. I go to a gym here in town, and there are more Weldworks shirts and hats than Denver Broncos stuff and Av stuff. And it's just like, and I can be down in Boulder on a hike, and someone will pass me with a Weldworks hat on. And it's like everywhere. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I remember when Weldworks first opened, I didn't like it. I went there. I, I didn't really like the interior. I tried. They had like three beers at the time. I was like, oh, I don't know if this place is going to last. Ha ha to former me because Webworks has just like hit 10 home runs in a row. And now it's like it is a Greeley staple. So, yeah, it, yeah. it's it's fun to think. So, yeah, small connection. Um <laughs> Uh, my husband started brewing in our garage. Um, kind of, he's a person who latches onto something and he get he kind of takes it to the nth degree, sometimes uh, to an unfortunate fault. Uh, <laughs> but this one was something that really stuck with him um, and, and started at home brewing and then um, started taking a couple awards at homebrew competitions and then came along a, um, a kind of a mutual friend who said, you know what, we, sh- we should open up. And so that was his business partner, Colin. And so lo and behold, three and a half years ago, they they opened the doors. And obviously a, a synchronistic uh, connection in, in that they were looking for a location. And I said, you've got to be downtown. Um, mm-hmm. And so through um, just connections, even to the chairman of our board, Bob Toynton, it's a property that he owns. And Um, was just being leased to um, some auto mechanic dealers, Um, they were able to take that spot. And and for me, it's really neat, too, from just a downtown perspective. It's an area of our district that wasn't, it's like not the the core. It's not the 16th Street by university. It's not the real, you know, heavy foot traffic, pretty kind of area. And what they did in um, turning that building into that, that block into something really special, so much so that, I mean, District 6 chose that location on that block to open their um, School of Innovation, which mm-hmm. um, is yep. now in its second year and, and wildly successful, and they have a waiting list. And it's interesting because with liquor laws, a brewery could not actually set up shop next to a school. They have to be within so many feet. But the reverse is not true. They can choose that. Um, and so um, oh. they chose to be there um, again. And I think, too, it just brought a vibrancy to that block. Um, so that was really neat. But, yeah, it's a, it's a great space. It's been fun to personally kind of journey and see um, 
see that success happen and, and just really become um, a destination point in the downtown. I mean, um, they do releases. People are asking me, like, why is there a line, like, literally across the block? Or why are people driving from Colorado Springs and Boulder? And actually, people flew in from out of state to pick up a certain beer. I mean, there is this whole microcosm of just a very niche market, which is fascinating to me. Um, but it's really fun to become a destination. And what's really neat to me is I think they have been a part of um, changing perspectives about Greeley. Um, I know personally when I've gone to help out at, you know, different festivals and events years when they first opened, people would say, where are you guys located? And we'd say, in Greeley. And their response was a few expletives like, no way, that's why, you know, like just this astonishment. And now people just, I mean, they embrace that fully. And they're like, oh, yeah, we love coming up. We drive up from Denver. We drive up from the Springs a couple times a week. I mean, it's it's all of a sudden, it's kind of shifted this mentality. And granted, it's, you know, not representative of a huge population. But I think it is. It's all these different businesses kind of doing their part to bring change to kind of their perception of, of Greeley and, and of to downtown. So that's been really fun to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you you mentioned the reputation of Greeley. That has been something that interested me from the time I moved here. That when I mentioned I uh, lived in Greeley, I really like Greeley. People always had varying opinions, but sometimes it wasn't the best appraisal. And I was always just like, I was curious. I didn't know, you know. I feel like a lot of people um, they hold predispositions they got from other people so maybe they haven't even ever been to Greeley but they know oh the smell and oh it's further from the mountains or anything and sometimes if you probe people enough they haven't even been to Greeley in like 20 years yeah 10 years and I'm like well okay duh you have this um idea of Greeley in your head but go check it out because I promise you that Greeley is not even the same town as it was when I moved here in 2014 and absolutely give yourself a Friday or Saturday night Go to the speakeasy where you have to flip a light switch to go in. Go check out Friday Fest. Walk around Lincoln Park. Like Yeah. Yeah. Just... And actually it's funny you said that there was actually a Nine News reporter who came up um several months ago and did this glowing review of, oh my gosh, if you haven't been to Greeley in a while, it's time to go. Mm-hmm. Um and it's and I think through so many efforts, right? I mean, again, it's all these people taking investment and pride and ownership. And sometimes I think People in Greeley were our our own worst enemies sometimes, and and, and people who hadn't um, taken pride because I think you just kind of get beat down by the negative things people have said. And I I think the city was really 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 smart with their Greeley unexpected campaign. Yep. I think that was such a turning yep. point in that reputation and really feeling that sense of pride, both internally and externally for the people who don't live in Greeley. I mean, you could go to the airport and see these Greeley unexpected ads highlighting all these great things we have in Greeley. Um, although now I'm, I'm to the point where I joke about maybe we should go backward and tell people it's not great because I'm not willing to, you know, sit in traffic and I'm not willing for our housing prices to go up and, you know, um, but certainly we're an area that's growing and, and I love that, that, that perception has shifted and I've, I've felt it at work. I've felt it, you know, um, through the brewery, I've felt it just in the community. Um, and when we're outside of the community, which is really positive. This is kind of a hard, arbitrary question to answer, but about what time frame do you think you started feeling that switch? Gosh, I really do. I, I credit a lot of that to the unexpected campaign. So even thinking within the last, the last five years, say, when did um, they start that? I didn't... Probably around then. Um, gosh, has it been longer than that? I'd I mean, say about five years. I know when I first moved here, the unexpected campaign had started, but they hadn't started doing things in DIA and they weren't on mm-hmm. billboards. Like, um, I work in Windsor two days a week and there's two billboards between here and there. Yeah. And yeah, it's definitely ramped up recently. Yeah. And again, and not to say that that's the only thing I, I, I think it is so many pieces and parts. I mean, it's a strong economy right now. So yeah. I think that feeds people's just overall confidence in, in what they feel about where they live. Um, and again, we're, we're in a fortest, relatively affordable place, um, to live and do business and to raise a family. 
Um, and I think just highlighting those rich parts of our, our community have, have made an impact. Also, I, I will say for downtown, um, thinking back to when I started, I'm, I was just trying to think of some things that, gosh, what were the, the negative things that people had a hard time getting past? And I think about safety. I feel like there was always this negative perception, and certainly it was a perception that, oh, downtown Greeley is unsafe. It's, it's, uh, you know, once you, you know, get east of 23rd Avenue or if you're down by the train tracks, it's, it's not a safe area. And over and over, all we did was just promote messages that were actually truth. And, and what the truth was is that it's, it's not unsafe. And, and actually there, the, the statistics, you know, show that it's opposite. I mean, in, in some areas there's, you know, worse crime in other parts of the city. I mean, so I think that was a big part of messaging and letting people know that it's safe and it's fun and it's vibrant. And then when they got here, I mean, we didn't have to sell it. I think people got to experience that for themselves. So sometimes it is, it's just a, it's a perception and it's an incorrect perception. And so all that we can do to expose people to um, all the great things. And that's why the city actually, they started these G town tours is what they call them. And I think it's so smart. They're, they're doing these bus tours and they get people on the bus and they do tours around the city. Like they did a, market like kind of a cultural market tour so they went into different places that maybe you wouldn't just walk in by yourself you know and they they featured the asian market and in the hispanic market and then they went to the french bakery and and then actually i was on a tour with um a lot of residence hall directors from unc who weren't familiar with the community and we showed them around and showed them the redarte center and showed them downtown Greeley and showed them different parts of it. And I think that's a great part too, is sometimes you have to be a tourist in your own town, like go and explore and go check out places you've never been to. Um, we have so many great assets and like the Pooter trail, like from downtown, you can hop on the trail and take it all the way to Fort Collins. And so there's great amenities. Um, and I think we're really rich in downtown in that we have a park and we have an ice skating rink and we have a recreation facility and a civic center where you can go to plays and performances. And, um, there's so many opportunities to be engaged and enjoy it. So, yeah, I, I, it kind of goes along with this saying I, I like to think about is like if people say they're bored, they're just not thinking hard enough. I mean, you can find things to, to wow you even about just being conscious and alive at any moment. So if you're bored, you're not thinking hard enough. Yes, and true. If you if you can't, I mean, this is for any town um, above maybe, let's say, like 50,000 people. There are some towns that exist in this world where there's probably not much to do. But for most places, all you have to do is look hard enough. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and admittedly, I'm sitting here talking about, uh, uh, you know, the downtown development authority and I'm bragging about Greeley, but there are many places in this town I've never been and yeah. I have to check that reality with myself, you know? Yeah. And so. I think that's a great point is you kind of recognize your own bias. Sometimes you're like, oh, that's true. I have never. And like me even saying that, I'm like, oh, you know that I haven't actually been to that one cultural market and I'd love to go. And and so I think that's that's the fun of it, too. And then what that does is it creates those stories and it it makes it approachable. Um, I love um, we have a new council member, um, Jonathan Smale, who sits on our our board. And I love following his Instagram page. I mean, he just kind of goes and explores. He gets on his bike and he cycles around town and he's taking a picture and he's, he took a picture of an old building and he said it was in downtown. And I was like, I have never seen that building. And so I love that idea of just to go and explore and be engaged and be engaged in your community. I mean, you know, I, I kind of love that idea of really, if you're going to plant yourself somewhere, just take ownership of that, you know, and, and we keep a nice, um, so we have a website and we keep a list of all the activities and events and things that are happening at the Moxie and the Civic Center and the Ice House and the things that we're putting on and, and truly you'd be hard pressed to not conflict, you know, with every other event that's going on because mm-hmm. there is yeah. so much happening. So, yeah, absolutely. And I'm not saying that this is the best place in the world. I'm just saying that, but it is, <laughs> is, um, let's see, what am I trying to say? I started this podcast because I wanted people to have a greater sense of community, even if it was 1% increase from listening to people that, aren't you know living in new york city they're not living on the other side of the world these are people they could run into at the grocery store everybody on this podcast and i want people to know that if you get out in the town that you live in if you get out in your own community and you run into the same people and you see friends out organically or you see coworkers out downtown organically that has 
a psychological and a mental effect on you that you're going to be okay, that your community surrounds you, and that you're not alone in this place. And people will say, oh, like I already knew that. But I, I, I think you can't underestimate the value of just being in a town that you feel like is populated with people that you know and you care about. Absolutely. I know I make the joke that you just can't go to the grocery store, you know, looking like a slob because guaranteed you're going to run into 10 people, you know. Right. Um, but that's something I love about Greeley. I think it, it is a community that um, that is growing and it is relatively, you know, I mean, 109,000, I think, is where we're at um, population wise. But um it's still so approachable. It's so community oriented. There are people who are willing to get their hands dirty to help, um, to support each other. And I, I love that about it. And I, it's sometimes I think people are surprised by that. And it's like, it's something that's really rich and it's really unique and something for sure that, uh, you know, my husband and I and our kids, it's something that we've really latched onto and, and loved about Greeley. Yeah. And even more than just Greeley. Let's say you live in a certain pocket of Colorado Springs or you live in Castle Rock or Fort Collins or Loveland or Windsor or Estes Park. Like, I think just getting people to take ownership of where they live and, and I don't know, I don't like the word pride. Pride seems um, the wrong avenue. But if people can get enjoyment um, out of their town here in Greeley and, and I mean... If you go to the Crest, you will meet the owner of the Crest probably the first night, if not the second. Justin, great guy. Love to talk to him. And Danielle's one of the servers. We talk to her every time. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> our friends, it's funny, we just had a, a friend visit from L.A. And we went down to the speakeasy below the Crest. And we were talking to Danielle. And then uh, Danielle walked away and she's like, oh my gosh, you know these people. And we're like, yeah, it's... Greeley? I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you know. It feels approachable. You know people in your town. Yeah, which I love it. It's approachable. There's not this air of, um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. It just feels approachable. Like, you could run into people and there's the, not this ostentatiousness to where you just feel like, oh, they're, you know, such and such. I, You know, we could never get to know them. I think people just are really friendly and really willing to help one another. Um, I know when Neil was opening the brewery, I, I was, I tell people this story because um, the owner of Right Coast Pizza, another great spot downtown, Justin, the owner, I mean, the owner of this, and this is his second location. He came and he was helping Neil fix the dishwasher and just, it's that kind of like neighborly support and, and really that local community. And that's, I think is extra special about downtowns is really small businesses get it and they know what it takes to run a small business and it's and it's a lot of work and so to feel that support in that community and then you know to have regular people who come in and patronize your build or your business and then to get to know them by name and, and form relationships and friendships even I think is really special yeah and in the age of consumerism and chains being in every town everywhere 90%, 95%, maybe even 100, I could be wrong, of the businesses downtown are local. They're not chains. These are not giant corporations with entire 100-person team to make one decision about some small pieces of business. These are, like we said, they're people that you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so you know that when you spend $10, $20, a dollar downtown, it's going to people in your community mm -hmm. and it circles. Yeah. And, and you think about it, like when you travel, right? I mean, every community has the target. Every community has, um, you know, Chick-fil-A or whatever it is, which those things are not bad. But think about the special places. If you're going to visit a community where you want to go, you want to experience like, where do the locals go? Yeah. Where do they go eat? Where do they go shop? And conversely, when you have friends or visitors come into town, you want to take them to those places that are special and unique and representative of your community. So yeah. um, it's really special for us, I think, in what we do to get to highlight those kind of businesses and, and the great business owners who, uh, who own them. Do you ever meet people who are traveling and somehow ended up in Greeley accidentally? They stumbled upon it. They don't really know... Like, do, can you think of any examples off the top of your head? Yeah, actually, it's funny because our office is is in a more of a retail location. So we've had a couple of those um, pop-ins, like, what is this? Um, and, <laughs> and I think it's really fun, actually. And even now with a hotel, 
um, folks coming in for maybe a conference or convention that maybe it's work related and they're just there, you know, staying at the hotel, but then are discovering downtown. And it's, it really is fun to see people's perspectives. And I, and I love the people who, who start at like ground zero. They have no negative, no positive. It's just like, wow, this is kind of a new place. And they're blown away. A great example just for me, um, recently is, um, Weldworks put on a big invitational event at the hotel and there was breweries from across the nation that came and they had about 1500 people come Mm. to these two sessions, to these beer events. So, so people coming from all over, right. Um, but what was really unique was the brewers perspectives and these breweries again, came from different States and, and don't really have a perception otherwise negative positively of Greeley and were just wowed. And especially again, the, of, of something that they could convey as just a friendly, really nice, like just great place. It's not super ostentatious. It's not downtown Denver. It's, you know, and and certainly I think we're not trying to be anything we're not, but, Mm -hmm. but I think people also crave that just kind of more, um, approachable feel in in downtown. So I, I love getting those kind of feedbacks and we've heard it from others. Um, the assistant public works director sent an email a couple weeks ago and they had a big transportation, um, conference at the hotel and the feedback that he had got too. I mean, he just felt like he should share it with us because again, just such positive, um, from people who had never come to Greeley, never been here, never heard of it even. Yeah. And it's just all the little events. Like I, I didn't even know. And you all have uh, another one coming up, uh, trick or treat street mm-hmm. for and Halloween. So we, um, we say this is our favorite event. It is so much fun. So all, all it is really is we get our downtown business community and they um, hand out candy to kiddos. I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds of kids and it's our favorite. I mean, to see all these little kiddos in their costumes with their families, um, you know, going to all the downtown businesses and getting candy. And then we have some sponsors and games and coloring and pumpkin decorating out on the plaza. So fun activities for kiddos. But it's it's such a fun event too, and as kind of fall comes in, it's the weather is getting cooler, and um, yeah, that's a it's it's certainly it's a kind of a low effort event, but just such a high return event, just with um, seeing all the kiddos out there. Yeah. So are, are these businesses handing out the candy, or are volunteers like people can come out, or yeah, we do. Typically, it's the businesses themselves, but certainly um, they love volunteer help, and we do have volunteers that help run our pumpkin decorating and games and right. um, setting up. Like we make the alley spooky and so you know last year we had a couple teams actually sports teams from unc come and help us you know make the alley spooky um so yeah there's definitely great opportunities and that's a great kind of segue to that i'm gonna put a shameless plug um here we go shameless plug. shameless plug Begins. here it is volunteers um we love our volunteers and we truly couldn't do what we do without volunteers Oktoberfest. i mean we have hundreds of volunteers um to help out in the kids area to check ids to help set up to help tear down all of these events and all of these great things for the community take so much manpower. And we are a staff of five, technically four and a half, um, Mm -hmm. by time. Um, but, um, it takes a village, you know, and I think that goes back to that ownership piece, right? Like if this is your community, this is a place that you love, find a way to volunteer and get connected. And we certainly love our, our volunteers and our interns. So if I hear this podcast and I'm emboldened to volunteer, where would be the best place to sign up? You could go to GreeleyDowntown.com. That's the quickest and easiest way. And there, there's an opportunity there that says, hey, I want to help volunteer. And it'll send us an email and we'll get right in touch with you. So Okay. I'm excited. It's my favorite time of year here. We're slipping into fall. Although you wouldn't know it because it feels like summer right now. It's true. Although I don't complain. I am a summer, summer lover. So yeah, yeah. I am getting sad to think about fall. <laughs> right. Well, um, I want to let you get to the end of your workday here. If people want to reach out and uh, contact Bianca Fisher, how might they get a hold of you? Email best? Sure. Yeah. Email's great. It's just Bianca. Uh, it's B-I-A-N-C-A at GreeleyDowntown.com. So, and certainly um, our office is at 802 9th Street. We're right below the Moxie Theater, right in downtown. So we always welcome if you want to stop in and um yeah we love to to touch base with folks too and located right above batter up cakes most yes. importantly so they could stop and get a premium cupcake absolutely while they're in the area and also check out the website i learned a lot in my like 20 minute dive through the uh the dda website yeah so greeleydowntown.com if you want to know about events that are happening if you want to know about business opportunities or properties that are on the market um if you want to see 
Yeah, there's there's all sorts of things here. If you want to read our meeting minutes from board meetings, um, really, you could uh, take all sorts of avenues. But it's a great opportunity um, to see what we're up to. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks so much for the time. Yeah. I want to say a very special thanks to Russell Isaac Long, the man responsible for writing and mixing all the music tracks used here at the Morinoco. If you'd like to access any content in addition to these episodes, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The More You Know Co. If you have ideas for people you'd like to hear on the show, hit us up at the email themoreyouknowco at gmail.com. Until next time, peace!